Um, big weekend for you guys, right? Um, really just wanting to know what your thoughts are coming in, Coach. I know that um, last season uh, Kaylee wasn't there for you guys because she was red-shirted, right? So, um, and, and, and that was kind of looking ahead to this year to kind of get to this point, I think, a little bit. So can you kind of talk about that and just where you guys are coming into the weekend and where the minds are, I guess, a little bit? Yeah, you know, last year when we made that decision, you know, Kaylee and I made that decision months and months out that we were going to give her the best possible chance to to not only qualify for the Olympics, but be ready for the Olympic Games. Um, you know, the thought of us last year actually making the national championships was was um, probably not a realistic one. But but I'll tell you, I think the stepping stones started a year ago, whereby that team ran incredible uh, as a program at the big 12 and at the regional championships. And, and, you know, lo and behold, had we have had Kaylee in that, in that lineup, we would have also made the national championships, the finals 12 months ago. That said, um, thank goodness we didn't because this year we've gone a whole nother level, uh, closer to the very front of the, the race, whereas we would have been one of the final teams selected a year ago. So, um, on so many levels, we're, we're really happy with the decision that, that we made collectively. And, you know, Kaylee's able to go out and run the Olympics and train properly for it. And, and, and boy, she ran a great race in Paris and, and here she is back, um, you know, as one of the leaders in the country. So you obviously knew what you had coming into the season, like you said, but was there, what point of the season did you really see like, okay, you know, they are really taking it to the next level. And now you're you know, what, fourth, fourth in the country now. And like, you guys have given yourselves great chance this year to, to make some national noise. So like, was there a, a moment this year where as a coach, you kind of saw them just kind of flip the switch or anything, or how did that go about? You know, one of the, one of the, one of the um, uh, running specific journalists in the country put out a, a, I don't know, a tweet or, or put something up on Instagram, which showcased, what what looked to be our potential lineup uh, for the fall, and that lineup that was projected by this young young man was was exactly what our lineup is right now. And when you when you looked at it and, and saw it with your own eyes, with their pictures below, you kind of realized how good you were. Um, we knew, of course, what what we had coming in, but I would say a moment was was when we um, probably about two weeks before we opened up the team. We were down on the, the 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 Montreal, and we left that day having completed a very difficult workout. And I just thought that, you know, six of those seven women that are in the roster right now, lining up on the weekend, uh, were were fabulous for for being late September. Um, looking back at our season, we did not race our varsity team, which is a little strange. We can do that in our sport. We didn't race them in September, so. We had a we had a, a second group running quite well for us at at various meets around the, the the East Coast in the month of September. But I think we were more of a shock than we would have been in October because we just had not lined up our team. And when we did, we went to Louisville, which is a meet that is is a national class meet, but it flies under the radar a little bit with some of the other gigantic invitationals. So we went there on I don't know October fourth or fifth, and and we ran a, a great team race. Um, Kaylee broke the course record. Joy was just off the course record. And we had a pack that was was relatively close behind. Um, we got a little bit of love for that. But we knew we knew based on past results from our from our very good teams that that we were in a, in a great place heading into the pre-nationals. Kaylee, from a runner's perspective, would you kind of agree that with coach and uh, maybe for you individually and as a team, where did you kind of see that this season was, um, you know, going to where you guys hoped it would? Yeah, pretty similarly. I think you can look at, um, obviously, the previous year, we we're kind of hoping that there'd be an opportunity like we have now. Um, but seeing it kind of come together, having everyone on on campus, I think I arrived to campus after the Olympics and there were some some new faces and I think just going through that process of the next few weeks of of seeing what you're building and training, I think that um, made me pretty confident for for when we did open up the season. So I think it was, yeah, definitely maybe on the um, more national 
scale. It was after kind of pre-nats where, where people were, were noticing a little bit more, but I think a little bit earlier, just kind of in the build towards even that first meet could kind of be a bit pretty confident in it. Yeah. And can we kind of next shift towards the course itself? I don't know if you're familiar with it. Are you familiar with the course that you'll be running? Yeah, fortunately, we've um, this would be my my fourth time running oh, wow. in my collegiate career. So and we were fortunate enough to go. That's where um, pre nationals um, was held earlier this fall. So as a team, we have a little bit of experience on it. Can you just kind of run me through it real quick and uh, talk about what what it what it shows, what challenges and where you maybe can take advantage of it as well? Yeah, it's like a, I would say from from when I um, kind of grew up or, or was looking at the NCAA, this was kind of like the traditional cross country course that um, that you look at. Um, so I would say it's it's one of the nicest courses in the country in terms of how they take care of it. Everything. It's I would say a pretty fair course. It's not something that's going to be super flat and it's also not something where you're you know, you're facing hills up for, for 80% of it. So I'd say it's, it's a pretty good equalizer type of course for people. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, it poses some challenges if, if you aren't feeling good on the day, but that could be like that with anything. Um, so yeah, ultimately I do think it, it's, it's a pretty fair one. I'd say the, the finish is, is an exciting finish in, as NCAA courses go. It's a little bit uphill and it's long, it's wide. And so there's lots of time for things to, to kind of unfold, even in the last couple minutes of the race. And then as you personally, obviously, this is really, really exciting for you individually, um, for your team and for you, you were third and 21 and 23rd and 22. And obviously last year had the year off with the red shirt. So can you just kind of pick your brain individually a little bit and just talk about um, what you're thinking coming in and how excited you are and what it really means to you just to have the opportunity to be able to go and race nationally? Yeah, I think really similar to the, to the Olympics. I think this year the, I mean, the goal in that is looks very different place wise. But I think just being ready to compete with um, a group of women that um, you you kind of hope to be right with, I think is really still the goal. I think ultimately the to win a national championship takes a lot of. Um, obviously ability but a lot of luck too on the day especially in cross country so um really the goal is to be able to compete as best I can to give myself that opportunity but um yeah it's one of the cool things about cross is that a lot of unpredictable things um can happen so as long as I'm, I'm hopefully putting myself in the best spot I think that's kind of that's the goal awesome hey thanks guys I appreciate that I have a couple questions too. So, uh, Coach, if you want to talk a little bit about the Sarah, Emily, and Madison, and kind of what they've done for the team this year. Yeah, you know, I think cross country is a, a unique sport because it really comes down to where your number five uh, comes in. Um, we're very fortunate to have Kaylee with us, and Joy's had a just a spectacular freshman campaign, and I, I think that's extremely. Um, comforting to to the pack we would call it the three four five six seven women um knowing that they've got some front runners out there you know doing their job and and, and really scoring some low points um but specifically to emily and and madison and sarah they have they've really been the rock they they have they have beaten 99.9 percent .9 of the teams three four fives all season when you look at just those scores and I, I was taking a peek the other day. I think we're, I don't know, with this with this varsity group, we're probably like approximately 110 and three, you know, if you actually looked at our record. So, I mean, the, the fact is we've raced a lot of teams and and those three have just been incredible. Madison came in um, ready at this exact point of her career to, I think, take a big, big step uh, in her running, with her running capabilities. Sarah's been steady since the day she's gotten here and she's, done a fabulous job the last two weeks and a Emily's the big one Emily has improved over two minutes this fall alone with her college PR so um two minutes is I mean you're 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 not approaching a half a mile but you're not that far away from a half a mile so so I think that's that's been a big game changer for us and you know if you look at the next two they're getting a little better every week um so they're they're going to be tremendous backup this weekend should we should we have an issue and have a problem but 
I, I would say that three, four, five have completely embraced their roles in the program. I, I think all sports, you know, most of the kids running or, or, or competing at, at the division one level, especially a power four, um, were probably stars in their high school. And, and to have to sit back and be a role player is not easy. Um, I, I, I don't care what sport it is. And you don't want to sit the bench in basketball. You, you don't want to red shirt in football. You, you want to be on the field. And, and I think these young women have, have really embraced what their role is. And I think that's just been a big key for us. Then if you could talk a little bit too about Joy and her impact as a freshman on the team and how she's came out and has probably been one of the best freshmen we've had here at West Virginia. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're looking probably right at one of the greatest freshmen we've ever had in Kaylee and uh, you know, Joy's better. So Joy's a step ahead of where Kaylee was certainly at that age. And, and I think Kaylee would agree to this. Um, Joy has been there to push Kaylee She's been there to um, allow for a level of comfort at the front of these cross country races to have a teammate right beside you. So, something that Kaylee didn't have since her freshman year. And now Kaylee herself was the big 12 freshman of the year. Um, and she had teammates around her a little better than her at that point. But in terms of being in the front pack where, where the battle and the war happens um, to look over and see joy has been extremely uh, comforting. I, I feel for, for Kaylee. So you know, aside, aside from from her, her from that in, impact with Kaylee, I think, you know, it's been a long time since we've had a one-two punch. Kaylee's been a one punch for us at the front, and then we've had a nice pack, and this will be f the fourth out of fifth year we've made the national final. So we've done a nice job with the pack over the years, but I think the fundamental difference now is that Joy um, gives comfort to to myself and to the to the pack that We've got two banging up front and, and they just need to do their job and get across the line. And I think on so many different levels, Joy's, Joy's changed our program this fall. Keely, if you want to talk about that too, like what coach said about Joy being there right next to you, kind of how that's been in your senior year, having someone right there by your side uh, pacing you. Yeah, I would completely agree with, with, with all of that. I think um, it's really gotten me to, uh, <clears throat> a new level, even in, in my racing, it's kind of brought me out of kind of a comfort zone that I've had maybe in the past. And, um, yeah, it's, it's something too, on kind of a, a daily level. Um, a lot of the training that, that I've done, um, throughout many falls previously has just been kind of elevated to, to a different level, having someone, um, that has kind of a, a similar approach to certain things and, um, yeah, I think it really just makes a difference when you have that kind of intensity from from the gun and it's it's something that I can um really feed off of during a race and and just really knowing um how hard she she works and and that's just yeah, it's really nice to kind of kind of have that uh comfort up there as well. So, yeah, really really happy to have her for this whole year. So obviously you guys are headed to Wisconsin and it's supposed to snow. So either coach or Kaylee, if you want to answer this question, how do you kind of deal with going from, I don't know what it was this weekend in state college, but from that to then a weekend later running in 20, 30 degree weather, how do you kind of deal with that? Go ahead, Kayla. Um, yeah, I think it's something that has been sort of like in the back of many people's minds, I think for the whole year, I think we've, um, not had maybe a lot of opportunity to run in super cold weather. I mean, we were at Baylor for big 12s and, and it's not been particularly cold at, at any point, but um, I think that you, I don't know, at least from kind of my perspective over the last several years, you kind of expect that something in towards the end of November in Wisconsin is, is going to get a little bit cold and I think fortunately, there's probably not a lot of other schools that have had to deal with much cold either. I think maybe maybe one or two regions had had some snow or something like that um, this weekend. So I think it's kind of a, a pretty even playing field when it comes to what you've you've experienced. And I think the race, it, it'll just kind of adapt to, to whatever the, the weather presents and it'll still be um, just as as challenging. But. Yeah, I think it's it's something, at least for me, I, I've been able to have that experience over the last several years of, of, of racing in some colder weather on the day. But 
um, yeah, I think it's just something you have to kind of be mentally prepared for to, to wake up on the morning and warm up and not feel great. Chris, you have anything for that? Yeah, I, I would just say it's, you know, like any sport that plays in the fall, soccer, football, um, outdoor sports, you know, cross country, um, you've, you know, you start when it's 90 degrees, 95 degrees in the, in the, in the, in the August months. And, and you, you know, that this is, a, this is a potential reality that's going to happen at the end of the year. So, you know, the tough survive and, um, obviously there's, there's an element to being too cold in a race and how it impacts performance. But for the most part, I think if we prepare properly and we dress appropriately, um, you don't want to overdress, of course, you don't want to overheat and you don't want to be bogged down with a bunch of clothes, but you certainly don't want to be freezing um, throughout the race. So I, I think that the message for our group is, um, you know, get out there and, and let's not try to trick ourselves to, into thinking that we're going to be the best prepared for this. We're going to be equally prepared. It's it's going to come down to an attitude and, and a um, an embracement of what's coming to to be able to shut it out and and still just execute you know race plans like we've we've been able to do for a month. Okay, my last question here, not to keep you guys too long, but uh, looking ahead to Saturday, obviously of uh, Big Twelve foe BYU ahead of you. So, what's kind of your plan for Saturday, or how do you kind of deal with knowing that those three teams are right there with you? You know, I'll take this one, Kate. I I, I Brigham Young's pretty much been at the top of the national list for six weeks now. Um, last year, I thought they were the national favorites, and, and unfortunately for them, they went in and, and just didn't get it done. Um, anything can happen in this race. If you think about the nature of the NCAA cross-country finals, you're putting what appears to be the 31 best teams on the line in one place at one time with one gun to say go. And there's really no politics once they're on the line. It's It's not minus Wisconsin it's not a home course advantage and I you know I think I think if we take care of our business we're going to be happy with the outcome and you you know you just teams are going to choke out there they're they're not going to get it done and some are going to exceed expectations you know when I when I look at the national rankings I've come up with 12 teams that I think can be fourth and I say that very 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 honestly I think there's 12 that are believing they can be fourth there's maybe more that i'm not thinking about i think once you secure your spot in the national ranking as long as you don't blow a race you tend to stay there so um i, I think it's a lot more than just the three in front i think it's many teams behind us and um and and on the day you know if one of those three in front of us who who i think deserve to be in front of us um don't get it done then 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 I'm, you know, I'm hoping that we're, we're able to execute the way we did at regions, the big 12 and, and pre Nats and, and sneak up a little bit higher. Um, so I, I, I just think it comes down to an attitude and a commitment to each other. And, and at the end of this race, we're going to look up at the scoreboard and we're going to find out, you know, who we are.